Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Ominous and today I will review the fourth studio album by the legendary death metal band Death. Um, requested by Phantom, you know, I was chatting with him and I said, oh, you know, I'm still missing one album. Do you want something to be done? And he said, yeah, sure, do some Death. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I love Death, so one of my favorite bands, you know, obviously two albums on my wall, so there you go. Um, yeah. For my concern, and I think pretty much anyone, you know, who is well versed into music, I think we can all agree, Death is the best death metal band ever, you know, no no debate there, I would say, but, you know, some people like it more, a bit more traditional, like Suffocation or Cannibal Corpse, or, you know, some people hate Death because, you know, um, Cynic is on there, and you might, you might not be a fan of Cynic, personally, I love Cynic, I think Cynic is a really unique sounding death metal band, other than more of a progressive metal band nowadays, you know, after Focus, post Focus, but with Focus they were really like a, just a great progressive death metal band with a little bit of jazz, jazz fusion, which I really love, so there you go. Um, yeah, and this is the album that uh, Chuck Schuldner asked the band um, Cynic to actually perform with, uh, with them. Um, Paul Masvidal and Sean Reinfurt are their names of, you know, the Cynic band members. Yeah, and I believe there are only two members in Cynic. So you have uh, a drummer and a guitarist. I don't think they have a bassist. Do they? I can actually look at it for a bit. Um, it doesn't appear Cynic is on there. Just the band members, I suppose. Um... Paul Mesfidal, who is of Cynic, of course, and Eon Spoke, who is, I believe, in a folk band, I think. Um, discography, Focus, of course. Uh, produced by Scott Burns. Yeah, I believe Scott Burns is like a legendary death metal producer, so horn death horns up for that guy. Love Scott Burns and his, you know, classic, uh, I believe. Um... Los Angeles recordings, I think it was Los Angeles, I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong. Somewhere in America, he was a great producer there, Flor Florida, I think. I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, well, who's on there? Oh, no, no, they had some session players. Uh, Jason Goble, guitar, Sean Malone, bass, and then Sean Ryver, drums, and Paul Masvidal, vocals, and also guitar, so there you go. So guitars and drummer of the band, there you go. Um, I don't know what the lineup after that is, but let's focus on that for now. Um, yeah, great, great album of course. It's 34 minutes long, it's pretty consistent. I think it's you know pretty much adored by everybody, except for people that are not really into cynic sounding death metal. But you know, personally I love that stuff because it sounds unique to me, so there you go. It is unique, so there you go. It's uh, rated by Rolling Stone, the 70, uh, the, the 70, how do you say that? It's the 70 uh, highest rated metal album for them. You know, it's on uh, it's on 70 for 100 greatest metal albums. There you go, according to Rolling Stone. This is kind of an entry level album by Death. This is the third album I think I'm reviewing by them. I reviewed Sound Perseverance and Leprosy before this. Maybe Scream Bloody Gore, I think I did. This might be my fourth album review by them, and this is their fourth album, so. You know, it's appropriate. Uh, we get the first song, Flattening of Emotions, which has a very great drum intro by um, Paul Mesfida, I think. Or the, uh, Sean Ryford, I believe. I already forgot, but you know, great band, so there you go. Uh, great drum intro, pretty much. Is it my favorite song? Yeah, I think it's my favorite song, because it just opens up the album really nice. Great production on the drums. I love it just when it kicks in and it just, you know, goes full speed ahead and you know you have Chuck's, Chuck's vocals there, the breakdown is great, the you know the the breakdown is amazing too, I believe I said that twice. But it's just a great opening song. It's just a perfect song to open up this fantastic album and I just love it. And then we got Suicide Machine which has pretty much the greatest breakdown of any death song arguably. I love uh, you know when you have that um, kind of sweep it sweep it sweep how the, how the fuck do you say that? 
sweet picking uh, sound. You know, I love that. And whenever they're done with that, they just go full blast again, like flat, flattening of emotions. I just really love it about Suicide Machine. Classic song as well. Love it. Now we get Together as one, which is another really melodic song. Uh, kind of repeats what the first two songs already did, but arguably does it even better with a lot of melody, a lot of great uh, instrumentation by the Cynic members and uh, Chuck Schuldner, of course. And I believe that um, Steve DiGiorgio is like the drummer, I believe. He was a great drummer, so it's like a perfect lineup right here. Steve, uh, no, no, Steve DiGiorgio is the bass player, who's fantastic. He, he's a fantastic bass player. So this is pretty much like a golden lineup right here. I really love this lineup. Really great song, uh, great diversity. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty much my favorite song on the album. I, I said flattening of emotion, but it might be together as one. You will see it eventually in the description if I made up my mind. But probably together as one. Really, really fantastic song. Now we got Secret Face, which is honestly kind of a um, hidden track of the record because it is between two of the most acclaimed songs of the album so it is definitely still a good song i think it's still really great but personally it is um if i would have to pick a least favorite track this probably would be it because personally it is a great track I, you know um, it doesn't really deteriorate the album for me but it just kind of feels like filler to me so personally still a great track i think still love it but if i had to choose a least favorite it would be this song then we get lack of compromise Lack of comprehension, which is of course a deaf staple. You have of course that very classic bass lick opening. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo -doo, you know, that part of course. And then it just, you know, goes right into the song. Uh, and I usually just show this to people and, you know, first they're like, oh, I like this intro, it kind of sounds spooky. And then, you know, the intro comes in and they, you know, they, they shed their pants. So I love the song because I can scare the shit out of normies and, you know, it's just great to listen to, great melodies. Uh, great solo, you know, between the middle, I believe. Uh, this final vocal is amazing too, I love that. So, definitely one of my favorites, uh, if not my... It, it used to be one of my favorite death songs, but it has changed, but it probably still is top 10 though. Who knows. Um, six track is See Through Dreams, which is uh, pretty much kind of like... Uh, this is kind of like a, a trilogy epic, I would say. These, three uh, last tracks because See Through Dreams is very uh, vibey and very dreamy in a way. It, it does really sound like a cynic uh, song in a way, this, uh, this whole album arguably, but especially the last three tracks. Uh, definitely a very spacey kind of song, it kind of turns into a space metal song in a way, if that, if that is a thing. Never heard of it though, so that's space, you know. Um, yeah, it does actually make sense, you know, the video game death, so there you go. Um, yeah, so this is a definitely a great opening track for the trilogy, if you can call this like an unofficial kind of trilogy. Now we get into Cosmic Sea, which is very, uh, a very unique um, intro in a way. Uh, this is definitely the most unique sounding death song ever, I would say, definitely on this album especially. Uh, a lot of great instrumentation going on, it is an instrumental, so you either love it or you hate it, but I love it. Uh, very unique sounding, I love the sound, uh, it sounds out of this world, literally, so definitely check it out. Cosmic Sea is a um, great title too, by the way, I love that title. And then we got Vacant, Plan Vacant Planet, which is uh, my favorite song of the trilogy. Uh, kind of goes back to the more flattening of emotions, suicide machine kind of uh, era of the album, together as one, you know. Um, just has a lot of like great intros, it just kind of combines everything that the album did already, but just, you know, cranks it up to 11, I suppose. I love the you know, kind of um, a galloping sound that the record has, and I love that breakdown. You know, I love whenever it, you know, just goes into a kind of beating-esque material. And it just gets very aggressive, very in your face, very direct. It really leaves its mark at the ending when it goes into the breakdown and you know Chuck's vocals, um, you know, they growl again and they just sound really kick-ass. I just really love it about this album. Um, I really love it about this track in general. It just really leaves me on a good mark. And whenever I hear Vacant Planets, it just really leaves me on a good mark, and I just want to, you know, 
play it again and play Flatling of Emotion. So it's pretty much is a perfect album in a way. Um, yeah, I love the first three tracks. Secret Face is really good, but my least favorite, Lack of Comprehension, is amazing. See through, see through dreams and Cosmic Sea are uh, unique as hell. And Vacant Planets is pretty much a perfect ending track, pretty much a perfect closing track. So yeah, I love Death. This is a great album. So I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a ten out of ten. Um, I love this album. I don't have a flaw with it. So there you go. Uh, let me know what you think about the album in the, in the comments down below and I believe if you get this album in Japan the Japanese bonus track is God of Thunder which is a Paul Stanley written Kiss, uh, Kiss cover but you know I don't give a shit about Kiss so uh, I will do it the regular version uh, but if you love Kiss then get the Japanese bonus version but personally I don't give a shit um, yeah I love this album I think it's great 10 out of 10 I don't have a flaw with it so there you go uh, if you hate Cynic or you hate, you know, that weird sounding, you know, just signature sound by them, avoid this album because it, it is not for you. Cynic is on there, so there you go. Uh, but if you love it, if you love Cynic, like I do, you know, Focus, then uh, definitely pick it up. This, you know, if you are a huge uh, Cynic fan, but you're not really digging Death for some reason, which is kind of weird. But if you are like that, then this is, this is your favorite Death album. If you want to get into Death, I would suggest this because you know it's their catchiest and their most straightforward album. I would say still you know technical death metal, so it's still kind of catchy. So definitely pick up Human if you're you know if you want to get into Death a bit easier, or if you're more of a traditional death metal fan, then you know listen to uh, the first three. Uh, I would recommend Leprosy personally, but Scream, Blo Scream Bloody Gore and Spiritual Healing are great tracks too. You can't really go wrong with Death either way, they're just a great band, so I love them. Uh, let me know what you think about the album in the comments down below. Like and subscribe to the channel and for video like one. Thanks Pat, for requesting this one. Enjoy your day and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Rip check.